biotechnology principles and processes biotechnology deals with techniques of using live organism or enzyme from organism to produce product and process useful to human in the sense making card bread or wine which are all micro mediated processes could also be thought as a form of biotechnology however it is used in a restricted sense today to refer to such of those processes which use genetically modified organism to achieve the same on a larger scale further many other processes or techniques are also included under the biotechnology for example in vitro fertilization leading to a test tube baby synthesizing a gene and using it developing a dna vaccine or correcting a defective gene are all part of biotechnology the european federation of biotechnology efp has given a definition of biotechnology that for in in compasses both traditional view and modern molecular biotechnology the definition given by efb is that follow the integration of natural science and organism cells part or part thereof and molecular analogy for product and service principle of biotechnology among many the two core techniques that are enabled part of modern biotechnology uh, are one genetic engineering technique to alter the chemistry of genetic materials dna and rna to introduce these into host organism and thus change the phenotype of the host organism to bioprocess engineering maintenance of sterile microbial contamination free ambient in chemical engineering processes to enable growth of only the desired microbe or eukaryotic cell in large quantity of for the manufacture of biotechnological product like antibiotics vaccine enzyme etc let us now understand the conceptual development of the principle of genetic engineering we probably appreciate the advantage of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction the former provides the opportunity for variation and formulation of unique combination of genetic setup some of which may be beneficial to organism as well as the population asexual reproduction preserves the genetic information while sexual reproduction permit variation traditional hybridization procedure used in plant and animal breeding very often lead to inclusion and multiplication of undesirable gene along with the desired gene the technique of genetic engineering which include creation of recombinant dna use of gene cloning and gene transfer overcome these limitation and allow us to isolate and introduce only one or a set of desirable gene without introducing undesirable gene into the target organism do you know the likely fate of a piece of dna which is somehow transferred into an alien organism most likely the piece of dna would not be able to multiply itself in the progeny cell of the organism but when it get integrated into the genome of the recipient it may multiply and be inherited along the host dna this is because the alien piece of dna has become part of a chromosome which has the ability to replicate in a chromosome there is a specific dna sequence called the origin of replication which is responsible for initiating replication therefore for the multiplication of any alien piece of dna in an organism it need to be a part of chromosome we have a specific sequence known as origin of replication thus an alien dna is linked with the origin of replication so that this alien piece of dna can replicate and multiply itself in the host organism this can also be called as cloning or the or making multiple identical copies of any template dna let us now focus on the first instance of the construction of an artificial recombinant dna molecule the construction of the first recombinant 
DNA emerged from the possibility of linking a gene encoding antibiotic resistance with a native plasmid autonomously replicating circular extra chromosomal DNA of Salmonella Taishi Moriam. Stanley Cohen and Albert Boyer accomplished this in 1972 by isolating uh, the antibiotic resistant gene by cutting out a piece of DNA from a plasmid which was responsible for conferring antibiotic resistance. The cutting of DNA at the specific location became possible with the discovery of so-called molecular scissors, restriction enzyme. The cut piece of DNA was then linked with the plasmid DNA. This plasmid DNA act as vector to transfer the piece of DNA attached to it. You probably know that mosquito act as an insect vector to transfer the malaria parasite into human. In the same way, a plasmid can be used as vector to deliver an alien piece of DNA into the host organism. The linking of antibiotic resistance gene with the plasmid vector become possible with enzyme DNA ligase which act on cut DNA molecules and join their ends. This makes a new combination of circular and autonomously replicating DNA created in vitro and is known as recombinant DNA. When this DNA is transferred into Hysteria coli, a bacterium closely related to Salmonella, it could replicate using the new host the DNA polymerase enzyme and make multiple copies. The ability to multiply copies of antibiotic resistance gene in E. coli was called cloning of antibiotic resistance gene in E. coli. You can hence infer that there are three basic steps in genetically modifying an organism identification of DNA with desirable DNA in desirable genes to introduction of identified DNA into the host see maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of DNA to its progeny tool of recombinant DNA technology now we know from the foregoing discussion that genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology can be accomplished only if we have the key tool that is restriction enzyme, polymerase enzyme, ligase, vector and the host organism. Let us try to understand some of these in detail. Restriction enzyme. In the year 1963, the two enzymes responsible for restricting the growth of bacteriophage of Hysteria coli were isolated. One of these added methyl group to DNA, while the other, other cut DNA, the latter was called restriction endonuclease. The first restriction endonuclease into was whose functioning depend on a specific DNA or nucleotide sequence was isolated and categorized five years later. It was found that hint to always cut DNA molecule at a particular point by recognizing a specific sequence of six base pairs. This specific base sequence is known as the recognition sequence for hint 2 Beside hint 2 today we know more than 900 restriction enzymes that have been isolated from over 230 strains of bacteria, each of which recognize different recognition sequences. The convention for naming this enzyme is the first letter of the name come from genus and second letter, second two letter come from species of the prokaryotic cell from which they were isolated. Example, eco ri comes from Hysteria coli ry 1c. In eco r1, the letter r is derived from the name of Stain Roman number following the name indicated the order in which the enzyme were isolated from that stain of bacteria. Restriction enzyme belong to a large class of enzyme called nucleus. These are of two kinds endo exonuclease and endonuclease. Exonuclease remove nucleotides from the end of the DNA whereas endonuclease may cut a specific position within the DNA. Which restriction endonuclease 
functions by inspecting the link of a DNA sequence. Once it finds its specific recognition sequence, it will bind to the DNA and cut each of the two strands of the double helix at specific point in the sugar phosphate backbone. In figure, each restriction endonuclease recognition a specific palindromic nucleotide sequence in the DNA. Do you know that palindromes are what palindromes are? These are groups of letters from the same word when we read both forward and backward. Example Malayalam has again the word palindrome where the same word the same word is read in both directions. The palindrome in DNA is a sequence of base pair that read same on the two strand when orientation of reading is kept the same. For example, the following sequence read the same on the two strands in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. This is also true if read in the 3 dash to 5 dash direction. 5 dash G A A C T T C. 3 dash. 3 dash C T T A A G 5 dash. Restriction enzyme card the strand of DNA a little away from the center of the palindrome site but between the same two same two base on the opposite strands this leaves single stranded portion at the end there are overhanging stage called sticky end of on each strand these are named so because they form hydrogen bonds with the complementary cut counterpart this stickiness of the end facilitates the action of the enzyme DNA lysis. Restriction endonuclease are used in genetic engineering to form recombinant molecules of DNA which are composed of DNA from different sorts of genome. When cut by the same restriction enzyme, the resultant DNA fragments have the same kind of sticky end and this can be joined together end to end using DNA ligase. You may have realized that normally unless one cut the vector and the source DNA with the same restriction in the recombinant vector molecule cannot be created. Separation and isolation of the DNA fragment. The cutting of DNA by restriction endonuclease result in the fragments of the DNA. These fragments can be separated by a technique known as gel electrophore electrophoreosis. Since DNA fragments are negatively charged in molecules, they can be separated by forcing them to move towards the anode under the electric field through a medium or matrix. Nowadays, the most commonly used matrix is agarose, which is a natural polymer extracted from seaweed. Seaweeds. The DNA fragments separate resolve according to their size through sieving effect provided by the agarose gel. Hence, the smaller the fragment size, the further it moves. Look at the figure and guess at which end of the gel the sample was loaded. The separated DNA fragments can be visualized only after staining the DNA with a compound known as ethidium bromide followed by exposure to UV radiation. You cannot see pure DNA fragments in the visible light and without staining. You can see bright orange color band of DNA in a ethidium bromide stain gel exposed to UV light. The separated band of DNA are cut out from the agarose gel and extracted from the gel piece, gel piece. This step is known as elution. The DNA fragments purified in this way are used in constructing recombinant DNA by joining them with cloning vector. Cloning vector. You know that plasmid and bacteriophage have 
the ability to replicate within bacterial cell independent of the control of chromosomal DNA. Bacterial phage because of their high number per cell, they have very high copy number of their genome within the bacterial cell. Some plasmid may have only one or two copies per cell, whereas other may have 15 to 100 copies per cell. Their number can go even higher if we are able to link an LN piece of DNA with bacterial phage or plasmid. Then we can multiply its number equal to the copy number of the plasmid or bacteriophage. Vector used at present are engineered in such a way that they help the linking of foreign DNA and selection of recombinant from non recombinants. The following are the features or that are required to facilitate cloning, in cloning into a vector. One origin of replication or this is a sequence from where replication starts and any piece of DNA when linked to these sequences can be made to replicate within the host cell. This sequence is also responsible for controlling the copy number of the linked DNA. So if one wants to recover many copies of targeted DNA, it should be cloned in a vector whose origin support high copy number to select a label marker. In addition to ORI, the vector required in a selectable marker which helps in identifying and eliminating non transformant and selectively permitting the growth of the transformant. Transformation is a procedure through which the piece of DNA is introduced in a host bacterium. They will study the process in subsequent section. Normally, the genes encoding resistance to antibiotics such as ampicillin, clonophenicol, tetracycline, or canamycin, etc., are considered useful selectable marker for E. coli. The normal E. coli cells do not carry resistance or against any of these antibiotics. Three cloning sites. In order to link the LN DNA, the vector need to have very few, preferably single recognition site for commonly used restriction engine. Presence of more than one recognition site within the vector will generate several fragments, which will complicate the gene cloning. The ligation of LN DNA is carried out at a restriction site present in one of the two antibiotic resistance genes. For example, you can ligate a foreign DNA at the BAMH1 site of the tetracycline resistance gene in the vector of PBR322. The recombinant plasmid will lose tetracycline resistance due to insertion of foreign DNA but can still be selected out from non recombinant DNA one by planting the transformant on tetracycline contaminating medium, the transformant growing on ampicillin containing medium are then transferred on a medium containing tetracycline. The recombinant will grow in ampicillin containing medium but not on that containing tetracycline. But non recombinant will grow on medium containing both the antibiotics. In this case, one antibiotic resistance gene helps in selecting the transformant, whereas the other antibiotic resistance genes get inactivated due to insertion of LN DNA and helps in selection of recombinant. Selection of recombinant due to inactivation of antibiotics is a cumbersome procedure because it requires simultaneous plating on two plates having different antibiotics. Therefore, alternative selectable marker have been developed which differentiate recombinant from non recombinant on the basis of their ability to produce color in the presence of a homogenic substrate. In this, a recombinant DNA is inserted within the coding sequence of an inline beta galactosidase this result into inactivation of the gene for synthesis of this enzyme, which is referred to as insertional inactivation. The presence of a common 
then substrate. This blue colored colonies eat the plasmid in the bacteria does not have an insert. Presence of insert result into insertional inactivation of the beta galactosidase gene and the colonies do not produce any color. These are identified as recombinant colony. Four vector for cloning genes in plants and animals. You may, may be surprised to know that we have learned the lesson of transferring genes into plant and animal from bacteria and viruses. We have known these for ages. How to deliver genes to transform eukaryotic cell and force them to do what the bacteria or virus want. For example, Agrobacterium pneumophyacin, a pathogen of several dicot plants is able to deliver a piece of DNA known as tDNA. To transfer normal plant cell into a tumor and direct this tumor cell to produce the chemical required by the pathogen. Similarly, retrovirus in animal have the ability to transfer, transform normal cell into cancerous cell. The better understanding of the art of delivering gene by pathogen in the eukaryotic host has generated knowledge to transform these tools of pathogen into useful vector for delivering gene of interest to human. The tumor including TI plasmid of Agrobacterium tumefacient has now been modified into a cloning vector which is no more pathogenic to the plant but is still able to use the mechanism to deliver genes of our interest into a variety of plants. Similarly, retrovirus have also been disarmed and are now used to deliver desirable genes into animal cell. So, once a genes or a DNA fragment has been ligated into a suitable vector, it is transferred into a bacterial plant or animal host where it multiplies. Competent host for, for transformation with recombinant DNA. Since DNA is a hydrophilic molecule, it cannot pass through cell membranes. Why? In order to force bacteria to take up the plasmid, the bacterial cells must first be made competent to take up DNA. This is done by treating them with a specific concentration of a divalent cation. cation. Such as calcium which increases the efficiency with which DNA enters. The bacterium through pores in its cells wall. Recombinant DNA can then be forced into such cell by incubating the cell with recombinant DNA on ice, followed by placing them briefly at 42 degree heat shock and then putting them back on ice. This enables the bacteria to take up the recombinant DNA. This is not on the only way to introduce alien DNA into host cell. In a method known as micro-injection, recombinant DNA is directly injected into the nucleus of an animal cell. In, other, in another method suitable for plants, cells are bombarded with high-velocity microparticle of gold or tungsten coated with DNA in a method known as biologistics or gene gun. And the last method uses disarm pathogen vector which then which when allowed to infect the cell transfer the recombinant DNA into the host. Now that we have learned about the tool for constructing recombinant DNA let us discuss the facilitating recombinant DNA technology. Process of recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology involves several steps in specific sequence such as isolation of DNA, fragmentation of DNA by restriction, endonuclease, isolation of a desired DNA fragment, ligation of DNA fragment into a vector, transferring the recombinant DNA into a host, 
conjuring the wholesale in a medium at large scale and extraction of the desired product. Let us examine each of these steps in some details. Isolation or genetic materials. Recall the nucleic acid is the genetic material of all organisms without exception. In majority of the organism, this is deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. In order to cut the DNA with restriction enzyme, it needs to be in pure form, free from other macronic molecules. Since the DNA is enclosed within the membranes, we have to break the cell open to release DNA along with other micronutrient, micronutrients such as RNA, protein, polysaccharide and also lipid. This can be achieved by treating the bacterial cell or plant or animal tissue with enzymes such as lysozyme, bacteria, cellul, plague, plant cell, kidneys, fungus, you know that genes are located on long molecules of DNA interwined with protein such as histone. The RNA can be removed by the treatment with ribonuclease, whereas protein can be removed by treatment with protease. Other molecules can be removed by appropriate treatment and purified DNA ultimately replicates out after the addition of chill ethanol. This can be seen as collection of fine thread in the suspension. Cutting DNA at specific location. Restriction enzyme digestion are performed by incubating purified DNA molecules with the restriction enzyme at the optimal condition for that specific enzyme. Agarose gel electrophoresis is employed to check the progression of a restriction enzyme digestion. DNA is a negatively charged molecule, hence it moves towards the positive electrode anode. The process is repeated with the vector DNA also. The joining of DNA involves several processes. After having cut the source DNA as well as the vector DNA with a specific restriction enzyme, the cut out gene of interest from the source DNA and the cut vector with the specific means or ligase is added. This result in the preparation of recombinant DNA. Amplified amplification of DNA gene of interest using PCR. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. In this reaction, multiple copies of gene or DNA of interest is synthesized in vitro using two. Sets of primary primer small chemical synthesized oligo, oligonucleotide that are complementary to the region of DNA and enzyme DNA polymerase. The enzyme extend the primer using the nucleotides provide in, provided in the reaction and genomic DNA as template. If the process of replication of DNA is repeated many times, the segment of DNA can be amplified to approximately billion times, that is 1 billion copies are made. Such repeated amplification is achieved by the use of a thermostable DNA polymerase isolated from bacterium thermos aquaticus, which remain active during the high temperature induced denaturation of double stranded DNA. The amplified fragment, if desired, can now be used to ligate with a vector for further cloning. Insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cell or organism. There are several methods of introducing the ligated DNA into recipient cells. Recipient cells, after making them competent to receive, take up DNA present in its surrounding so if a recombinant DNA bearing gene for resistance to an antibiotic. Ampicillin is transferred into E. coli cell. The host cell becomes transformed into ampicillin resistant cell. If we spread the transformed cell on agar plate containing ampicillin, 
only transformant will grow untransformed recipient cell will die since due to amplification ampli ampicillin resistance gene one is able to select a transformed cell in the presence of ampicillin the ampicillin resistance gene in this case is called a selectable maker obtaining the foreign gene product when you insert a piece of allen gene allen dna into a cloning vector and transfer it into a bacterial plant or animal cell the allen dna gets multiplied in almost all recombinant technologies the ultimate aim is to produce a desirable protein hence there is a need for recombinant dna to be expressed the for foreign gene is get expressed under appropriate condition the expression of foreign genes in host cell involves understanding many technical details after having cloned the gene of interest and having optimized the condition to induce the expression of the target protein one has to consider producing it on a large scale can you think of any reason why there is a need for large scale production if any protein encoding gene is expressed in a heterologous host it is called a recombinant protein the cell harboring clone genes of interest may be grown on a small scale in the uh, laboratory the culture may be used for extracting the desired protein and then purifying it by using different separation techniques this uh, the cell can also be multiplied into a continuous culture system wherein the used medium is drained out from one side while fresh medium is added from the other to maintain the cells in their physiological most active log or exponential phase this type of culturing method produces a large biomass leading to a higher yield of desired protein small volume culture cannot yield appreciable quantities of product to produce a large quantity the development of bio reactors where large volume 100 to 1000 liters of culture can be processed was required thus bacteria bio reactor can be thought as vessel in which raw materials are biologically converted into specific product individual enzyme etc using microbial plant animal or human cells a bio reactor provides the optimal condition for reaching achieving the desired product by providing optimum growth condition temperature ph substrate for vitamin oxygen the most commonly used bacteria bio reactor are of steering type which are shown in figure A steel tank reactor is usually cylindrical or with a carb based on facilitate the mixing of the reactor content. The steeler facilitate even mixing and oxygen availability throughout the bio reactor. Alternatively, air can be bubbled through the reactor. If you look at the figure closely, you will see that the bio reactor has an agitator system, an oxygen delivery system, and a foam control system a temperature control system ph control system and sampling port so that small volume of the culture can be withdrawn periodically downstream processing after completion of biosynthesis synthetic stage the product has to be subjected to a series of processes before it is ready for making marketing as a finished product the process include separation and purification which are collectively referred to as downstream process the product has to be formulated with suitable preservative such formulation has to undergo through clinical trials as in case of drug strict quality control testing for each product is also required the downstream processing and quality control testing vary from product to product 